Ahoy, Bob here, and we are drawing pirates. Right now I'm kind of just sketching around, trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do for this painting. Typically, when I go into a painting, I know ex what I want to do and how I want it to look at the end. But on this one, I wasn't really sure. And before I get into all the art process stuff, um, I wanted to say that this painting is really just a story of failure. Now, not everyone will know that I failed because the only people who will see this video, I guess, are me and you. Everyone else who sees the final image online will just think that that's what I intended. But we will know that it wasn't 100% true. What I originally intended was to have a lower angle shot of the character mucking up something foreshortened and not necessarily worm's eye not necessarily straight on something in between but as the painting progressed I slowly flattened it more and more as you can see I typically do a rough sketch first and after I do the rough sketch and kind of figure out what I want, I lower down the opacity and then I draw over with a little bit of a cleaner line. I do this for a few reasons. Um, one is sometimes I want the lines to just look nice because then it makes the, the sketch more appealing. And number two, it allows me to go over it and when I do it with a cleaner line, it starts to... Um, show me where there's anatomy problems and other things like that and for my process I always find it pretty important to have a good line drawing before I go into the painting it's really kind of like a save point in a video game if I have a good drawing before going into the painting um, and I somehow <laughs> somehow mess up the painting I can always go back to the drawing and restart but if I was to start off with just values or colors, sometimes you just need to restart the whole painting. So that's why I always think of it like a save point before I now I just imagine myself like the painting process is like playing Dark Souls or something. <laughs> sometimes it feels like that. So when I am drawing out the lines and I am trying to make the lines look nice for a drawing. Some of the things I need to focus on are, well actually a big thing I need to focus on is line weight. Now I there's lots of ways to do it but the way that I do it is uh, I like to put line weight on planes that are facing down towards the ground. Um, I like to put line weight on places where light might not escape as easy so for example maybe like underneath the chin or in pinch points and what that does is it allows the image and now if you do those accurately it allows the image to read pretty well without having to do a lot of shading or anything like that and that's really the benefit of line weight really Once I have the lines where I think they're good or at least serviceable for a painting, I will make a mask layer underneath them. And then from there, I will start adding in some basic values. I typically try to have every piece of material be a different value. So like the skin color is going to be somewhat mid-tone-ish, and then the white is going to be obviously, or the shirt's going to be a little bit whiter, and then the leather. And I want everything to read. Uh, without any sort of lighting because once you start adding the lighting it's a lot easier to make something read but if everything reads without it it's going to slowly start coming together right around here I start working on the face and if a painting was like a Dark Souls game I would say the face is like the end boss <laughs> I, yeah, I have to try a face over and over until I get it. I wish there was some sort of cheat code, but there isn't. You got to just 
plow through. And typically when I do a face, I will draw it out and then go from there and do all the face planes and everything, and it'll look all right. But this time around, I wasn't really digging the way that the face was going. I wasn't really digging the angle. And so I looked around and I actually found some reference of a, of a better angle, and that's the what I'm drawing out now. <clears throat> now, the reference I have isn't exactly like this. The lighting is a little bit different, um, so I have to still make up some parts of it. But I try my best to kind of keep the angle and having that reference there to look at for it is super helpful. So if anyone's trying to paint faces and stuff, make sure you always have reference. Don't just go off um, your own. Don't just go off and uh, make it up. It's always really helpful to have the reference there, even if you don't copy it one for one, which you probably shouldn't, but having it there is really useful. Once I have the face done and I kind of have the values and some of the lighting set in, you can kind of see the whole painting process really slow down. It's almost like there's a not, not a lot going on, and that's, <laughs> that's really because there isn't. Once you have that, the painting is actually kind of done, so the rest of it is really just polish. Now, when I talk about polish, what I really mean is just going through and fixing some of the edges and um, making sure things are rendered the right way or with the right values or making sure that certain shapes read well and working on cast shadows, make sure that the cast shadows look nice as they lay across the forms. All these things are part of my finishing process. They all take time because it requires me to kind of zoom out, flip back and forth, reassess, keep looking at it, what's standing out to me, what don't I like, what do you I like, trying out different shapes. Um, I'll move things around in the background a bunch. I'll do something, turn it off, turn it back on. It's kind of a chaotic process really for me. At the beginning, it's at the beginning of the painting, everything seems pretty structured. If I draw it, I lay in. If I draw it and it looks nice, all right, go to step two. I lay in the values. Now those values look nice. All right, let's move to step three. I put in the lighting. The lighting looks nice. All right, step four. And by the time I get to the end of the steps where everything's looking nice, but it just doesn't look as crisp as I want, then it's going to need that extra level of polish that I like to do. And, you know, while it can be frustrating because I think um, half of the painting, the important process, uh, is the drawing and the lighting and all that stuff. And that's really what makes it read. But what's what makes it look really nice at the end is um, looking clean and stuff like that. What makes it look really nice is the polish. But it takes up so much time it takes up a lot of time i think uh, i forget which artist said it they said like 20 percent of the work takes 80 percent of the time and it's it's totally true but it's important it's important if you want it to look nice and look the best that you can make it look so make sure that your edges are clean you don't want jagged edges because that uh screws at the eye in some weird way and kind of cuts down on the way that we look at the form now, this happens to me a lot in a lot of my illustrations. I redo hair a lot. I've always struggled with hair, and it's something um, I really need to work on. And in this one, is <laughs> this one's no different at all. I had an idea that the hair would be blowing around everywhere, and as I slowly um, painted into it, I painted it down lower and lower and lower. Um, it's always difficult. Uh, it's something that I, I'm going to definitely need to work on in the future, but in the end, I still think that the hair turned out all right. Not exactly where I wanted, but it turned out all right. And now we are getting closer to the end of the painting, and 
remember what I said at the beginning, how this painting was kind of a story of failure. And in some ways, it still is. <laughs> the, the, initial, the initial sketch is way more dynamic than the end that I got. But in the end, people won't know it and other than you and the 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 finished product still i think looks all right it just wasn't exactly what i wanted but that's okay because sometimes paintings go that way as we get closer to the end i just want to say i really appreciate the support uh, on patreon it means a lot to me that there's people out there that actually want to see my content and see what I'm doing and see what I have to say and it's pretty amazing so uh thank you guys so much I really do appreciate it and I'll catch you guys later